happens. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Thomas Keyboy, weather rate certified 11 years in a row. Thomas, just devastating images coming out of Florida. Yeah, and they're still feeling the brunt of this still Category 3 hurricane. It made landfall winds of 150 miles per hour roughly about four or five hours ago, so it's still holding on to a lot of strength. This is still an extremely powerful hurricane. There are still spots along the Florida coast that are still seeing a significant amount of storm surge, especially around Fort Myers on the south side of the circulation as you have those westerly winds pushing that water along the coastline. But we're also seeing significant impacts from rainfall as well. There's an emergency flash flood warning basically right along the circulation north of Fort Myers, as in spots we've seen over a foot of rain and possibly around a foot and a half as well. Meanwhile, we're now starting also to see flood warnings up around Orlando as this is a very wide reaching hurricane. It's going to continue to move off to the northeast and could still hold on to hurricane strength as it moves towards Orlando. So that's going to lead to even more impacts through the Florida Peninsula and then possibly up along the eastern coast as well as you get that counterclockwise circulation storm surge. Very much a possibility in northeast Florida all the way up towards Georgia and also the South Carolina coastline. The National Hurricane Center has it being a tropical storm as it moves over the open waters of the Atlantic, but there is a chance that it could hold on to hurricane strength before it finally moves towards the Appalachians and starts to lose a lot of its steam and starts to fizzle away. But they could see some pretty heavy rainfall even in portions of northern South Carolina and portions of North Carolina. But we have those tropical storm watches and tropical storm warnings in effect for most of the southeastern United States as the hurricane warning continues for south portions of southwest Florida and also through the Orlando area up towards around Daytona Beach. So this is a very significant hurricane that is currently working its way through Florida. Meanwhile, back at home with the southerly flow returning, we're starting to see more in the way of wet weather. We saw a few showers this morning, so I got a few showers still in southeastern Utah, kind of around Moab and San Juan and Grand County, but the bulk of the shower activity is in Miller County, Juab County, and Tuella County. Also starting to see a few showers over in Utah County, but these showers are moving off to the northeast and could find their way towards the Wasatch Front as we do have a shower that's moving its way over Utah Lake. Currently high pressure sitting to our southeast, low pressure and cold front approaching from our west, and this is what's setting the stage for an active pattern as we go throughout the next couple of days. In Cedar City, it's 74 degrees. Got a good amount of cloud coverage here, but a very pretty view nonetheless. And as we make our way into northernmost Utah, Utah State University overlooking Old Main, 80 degrees in Logan. But once that cold front moves through, it's going to be feeling more like fall. And along the Wasatch Front, we're holding on to a slight chance right now, but the chance for showers and thunderstorms will remain in the forecast. Not everybody gets wet weather, but if you do have any plants tonight, just keep the umbrella handy just in case and continue to keep your eyes to the sky. So let's begin the future cast 8 o'clock and the future cast is showing as we go through tonight those showers moving through portions of northern Utah before things calm down a little bit by daybreak tomorrow. But as we see that cold front approach from our northwest, scattered showers and thunderstorms going to be a possibility once again with that best chance being along and north of the I-70 corridor as that cold front's mainly going to be that emphasis. But as this continues to work its way from northwest down to southeast, that best chance for showers and thunderstorms by the time we get into our Friday will be, will be mainly east of the I-15 corridor. So over the next couple of days, we're going to hold on to the chance for additional wet weather. Keep your eyes to this. Keep your eyes to the sky and stay weather aware in Salt Lake City. We'll see a high of 83 tomorrow. And again, those thunderstorm icons mainly north of I-70, but in the higher train down south, I wouldn't be completely surprised if we do see at least a little bit of wet weather. So we'll keep that slight chance for St. George for both Thursday and Friday. Daytime highs settling right around 90 degrees. Overnight lows in the middle 60s that will persist through the weekend. We'll be breezy at times as well. And along the Wasatch Front, a chance for thunderstorms for our Thursday. Slight chance sticks around Friday into Saturday with daytime highs dropping into the low and mid 70s. Overnight lows could drop into the upper 40s and low 50s. Then as we dry things out, daytime highs will be mainly in the upper 70s by the end of the weekend into early next week. Glenn.